Hey there everyone, Don Evans here from WatchReport.com. Today I have a prototype of the Duzu DWD2 Diver. Now Duzu is known for watches that are a little outside the box. Watches that evoke a classic design but with their own style and flair and ones that really cannot be considered an homage to anything out there. So that brings me to this latest dive watch which should be available for sale on Kickstarter on August 1st. Now I'm recording this well before that, but Duzu sent along one of their working prototypes, and I'll give you a spoiler, I'm impressed for the most part. How impressed? Let's find out. So as usual with these Kickstarter watches and prototypes, there's a lot of information to discuss and show you here. And there's only going to be, now there's only going to be one color dial, but then there's going to be a lot of options, and then there's going to be two different movements, and I'm going to try and discuss all that, but I'm also going to show you a lot of information on screen, so you're going to want to pay attention to that. Now, this is a prototype. As such, I don't have the packaging for it. Uh, I'm going to show you images of the packaging on screen. You're going to see a lot of images of different stuff on screen. I'll try and point it out as we're going through it. Now, this watch is going on Kickstarter August 1st. I'm reviewing this before that, but I'm going to try and have it up, I think, about two weeks before. I think July 9th is the date, so maybe almost three weeks before it goes live. Now, there's going to be stretch goals as well as early bird pricing. Let's go ahead and discuss that. Your standard movement will be the Miyota 9015. There's going to be a limited run with the Eta 2824. You're going to see on screen some info about the stretch goals, one of them being custom fitted rubber straps. Early bird pricing will be $349. That's going to be for the Miyota. I don't have info on the pricing of the Swiss version yet. Retail price is going to be $549. Now, I'll show you the specifications here on screen, take a good look, but while you're looking them over, I want to point out a few other things. With the crown guards, it does measure 46.6 millimeters. The bracelet does not taper. You're going to see that the bracelet has a uh, ratcheting extension clasp. You'll see it has the Duzu logo on it, and it weighs 215 grams on an unsized bracelet. Now, a few other things. It's going to come with either a date or no date, blasted or brushed versions. This is, of course, the brushed version. Now, for the blasted version, I'm told there will be a PVD hard coating applied to them as well to reduce scratching. As I said, there's going to be a choice of movements, and all watches will be water resistant to 300 meters. So, before I go further, I do want to reiterate this is a prototype. Of course, usually prototypes have some issues. The biggest issue on this one, well, there's two issues. One is the loom. I'll discuss that a little bit later. But the other one is the lug ends have some wobble to them. This is easily rectified. Uh, I emailed the owner, Wayne, of Duzu Watches about this, and he said it was a spring bar issue. He put thicker spring bars in there, and of course, it took care of it. This will be done on the production versions as well. and. I didn't try it myself because this is a prototype. I have to send it off to somebody else and I didn't want to mess with that. But let's go ahead, let's start off talking about this watch and I want to start on the dial. Now I'll put another graphic on screen here because the dial is inspired by the manta ray and I want to show what Duzu talks about, what they show with this dial and where the inspiration came from. Now my favorite feature of this would be the dial indexes. They're framed and they make it appear like a sandwich dial, uh, dial, excuse me, and even maybe a porthole. But as you can see, they are done to resemble a manta ray's eyes. Either way, I like the look and that both the numerals and the indices are coated in loom paint. The dial is free from needless text with only the Duzu logo, which is also loomed by the way, and the model number on the dial. This one has the date, which unfortunately is located at the 430 position, something I absolutely despise, but again, you can get a no date version. Now looking around the case, the angular design, the large crown guards, the flared out lugs and the end links, it all makes this watch appear chunky, but again, it's not even 14 millimeters thick with the crystal, and even though this is a very solid filling watch and weighs over 200 grams, it's really not a large watch. The bezel has 120 clicks, 
and really I see no play in it whatsoever. You'll notice that the bezel does not overhang the case. Turning it is no problem and the clicks are very solid and it lines up very well to the dial markers. The crown guards are beveled so accessing the large crown is no problem and even with this being a prototype the crown feels smooth and screws in nice and tight. Be sure to notice the very nice case finishing all around as well. I especially like the vertical brushing on the sides of the case. Now you turn it over to the case back. I'll put up another graphic on the screen explaining all the case back elements. It's a pretty simple back, except for the small window showing the piece of the movement that has the manta ray etched onto the glass, but I like the somewhat industrial look. The bracelet matches up nicely with the case and is about 3.5 millimeters thick, Though at its thickest point, the ratcheting clasp is 9mm. That's just one of the issues with the style of clasp. We've seen this clasp on many other makers over the years. It's just a thick clasp, so you gotta know that going in. The links used are solid one-piece screws, and concerning that lug issue I talked about earlier, again, this is a prototype. The lug pieces are unique in that they hug the case, but they don't turn down, they instead turn up, and they follow the shape of the case and bezel. On my 7.5 inch wrist, this looks and feels good. For how angular it looks, it feels smooth on my wrist with no rough spots on the case back or bracelet, and I would need, I would need to remove two links for a perfect fit, or at least it seems that way, but with that clasp, I can always pull out the extension if it's a little too tight. Now the loom is one area I do hope will improve upon come production. In my example, you can really see the rough cut hour and minute hand, but beyond that, the loom on the dial and hands is actually very, very good. The biggest area of contention I have is the bezel. Black loom is being used, and as you can see, it feeds rather quickly. I also think they screwed up on this prototype, unless I read it wrong, as it is stated on the Duzu website that the black loom paint should mimic the color of the dial loom. Now obviously this is the BGW9 model, but the black loom is glowing, green, is glowing green on my example. Now personally, I like that dual color loom contrast, but as far as I know, it won't look like this come production. The other thing I wanna point out is I'm not sure how the black loom is applied, and how it will hold up over the years or if there's any coating to prevent it from rubbing off. So now, I have to say, for the most part, I am impressed. The loom is really the only area I have an issue with, more so the bezel, as I just said, but being a prototype, I understand this could be rectified in production. Now I know, I've said prototype a lot during this video, but I think it's important to do so because many times I review a prototype and you know, people start saying, well, this is wrong, this is wrong. And that's you know the issue with a prototype and a sample. And then I'm not showing you a finished product here for review. One thing that I do wanna make clear is this is not an advertisement, it is a review of the product, but I go a little lighter usually on a prototype because I know it's not the finished product. So you want, you know, if you just take this video as a way to get a really good look and all the information at the watch, but no, it is not a final product. Now, I really like the case profile and finishing. I like that there's a choice of movements, and I think what, you know, all that is out there, this is something fairly different, which is hard to do in an oversaturated market. Some, of course, are gonna want this watch to be bigger, some will want it to be much smaller, but Wayne, the owner of Duzu, he makes watch designs that he wants to wear first and foremost, and then he looks for customers that like the same. This one's no different, and I'm sure there's still a market for a dive watch out there like this. It kind of reminds me somewhat of, say, like a Bachette Cave Dweller. It's a chunky, kind of chunky, kind of thick piece. It's really not, but it does appear it. But I know there's a lot of people out there that still like this style and design of watch. Now, there's going to be a lot of options to choose from, and then with the Kickstarter goals and early bird pricing, it can get a little confusing. I guess that's what you have to do these days though for Kickstarter. As I said, this will go live on August 1st. I will update all the info in the description with a link to the campaign when it does go live. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them. As always, please like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. It greatly helps the channel and that way you'll never miss another watch report review. As always, thanks for watching guys. I'll talk to you on the next video.